Hi everyone, alright, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create this really trippy and awesome looking iridescent slash infrared material. It's super easy to do and you can even go ahead and animate the material and apply it onto anything. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to press Shift A, go to Mesh and create the monkey, Suzanne the monkey. Just scale this up, go to the wrench icon, add modifier, subdivision surface and just put this on 3. And then to get the surface nice and smooth, I'm going to right click and shade smooth. Now I'm going to go to my material properties, click on new and we can head over to the shading tab. So you can see I'm on the material preview over here for my viewport shading. So to create the iridescent material, we just need three nodes. So press shift A over here in your shader tree and we want to search for color ramp, right? And then the magic node that actually creates the iridescent effect is called layer weight. So I want to connect the layer weight over here of the facing onto the fact of the color ramp. And then our last node is going to be hue and saturation. So we want to connect the color over here to the hue and saturation and the color over here to the base color. Okay, so you can already see we get this effect present, but we obviously want to create the iridescent effect with all of those crazy looking colors. So we need to actually create a rainbow effect on the color ramp over here. Now you could manually try and do this by adding color pickers and adding in new colors and all of that, but that's just a waste of time. Undo that, just change this RGB to HSV and change this from near to far. Now select the first color picker and make this white and change this all the way to pink. Then select that second color picker and do the exact same thing, make it pink as well. And there we go, we've already got our iridescent effect. So this hue and saturation, if we just adjust the hue slider, we can now scrub between all of these different insane and trippy looking uh, transitions of all of these really cool looking colors. So this would be the classic iridescent material, but I want to show you how you can experiment with this a little bit further uh, to create some really cool looking effects. Okay, so first of all, if you play around with the blend over here, you can also change the way that the iridescent effect looks on 3D geometry. You can see it's there's a lot more pink that's prominent in this area by controlling this blend slider. But now if we actually go ahead and we bring in another node that's called Voronoi, okay, and we connect this layer weights facing to the vector, and then the color over here to the fact, we are going to create this really insane looking uh, cartoony material. So it's using the iridescent uh, properties, but it's being driven by this Voronoi. And if you play around with the scale, you can see you can also get some different effects. So this is where the fun comes in. It's just playing and experimenting and trying to plug in different nodes between the layer weight just to see what results you end up getting. So I thought this was really cool, especially if you're going for a cartoony aesthetic. You just need to use this Voronoi texture. What's also cool about using a Voronoi uh, texture, you can see right now it's on 3D, but if I change it to 2D, it basically it reduces the amount of colors that are visible. So if I'm trying to isolate maybe just three individual colors, I guess that's one way of doing that just by playing around. So a lot of the times I'm just experimenting, right? I'm just having fun in the program and seeing what I can come up with. But now if we change the layer order of this Voronoi, so if I take facing and put that in the fac, okay, and just uh, disconnect this. If I put the Voronoi first and connect this to the normal, we're going to get this type of effect. Now you can see whenever I move my camera, each individual face over here is getting this color shifting effect. So this is super cool. But if you increase the scale over here and bring this like all the way down, okay, it almost seems like you're creating like this color shifting glitter material, as you can see over here. So if you were maybe doing a scene with a camera that's moving around your object, you'll have this really awesome looking color shifting effect just by setting it up like this and using Voronoi. So I encourage you guys to experiment and see what you can come up with. But I thought I would just show you that you can get some interesting effects using something like the Voronoi texture. If you want to, you can also make this material glow. So over here I want to create a mix shader. Attach it over here and create an emission and attach it to the second shader slot. Take the UN saturation and attach it to the color. And if I bump up the strength, it starts to glow. But if you're using EV, make sure you enable bloom so you can actually see that glowing effect. So now I can have this color shifting, glowing Suzanne head. And I think this is just a really trippy and interesting looking material that you can create. 
And remember, anything, any slider that you adjust over here can be animated. So this hue slider, let me just make sure I'm on frame zero. Okay. If I right click, click on insert keyframe, and then let's scrub forward to 100. And then let's put that on, uh, I'll put that on one, then right click insert keyframe. You can see that I get this color shifting effect. Now, if I just put my end on 100, that is now animated. So it's really cool. We got this iridescent material. It actually reminds me of infrared uh, visuals as well, like stuff that you'll see in Predator. And there we go. Also, when you move your camera, you get that very interesting looking effect. Now, since this is just a simple material, if I create another object like this icosphere and we select Susan and we just go to this icon and click and drag it onto the new geometry, you can see it applies this awesome and super colorful material onto the icosphere. So just experiment, have fun with this material and use it in your animated scenes. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the tutorial. You can see just how simple this is to create, but I encourage you to go out there and experiment. Maybe instead of using Varenoir over here, maybe try and use noise, bring in some images, try and see what effects you can get. But once everything is set up, it's just a matter of you experimenting. Okay, so as always, I truly appreciate the support on this channel. You guys are awesome and stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.